Hey, this is Vuin, this is Utility Basics. And the problem with utility is that it's really hard to understand great utility because it's really just the absence of bad utility. There's no 360 no scope he grenade. It's really something anybody can throw is a good nade, a good molly, a good smoke. There's nothing super crazy about it. The idea though, is that you just don't throw any bad nades and you have good utility usage. So it's really more about consistency than anything else. And the key to consistency here is making sure that you're consistently having a reason to use your utility. People often have a tendency to kind of just toss out their utility willy nilly, especially when they want to go aggressive. People have this idea that they don't want to die with utility in their inventory. And so they have a tendency to just throw it away. They also have a tendency to throw it away when they're getting a bit uncomfortable and they feel like an execute might be coming out. Just try to make sure that you're using your utility effectively and at least having a reason to do so. And the reason you want to be having depends, of course, on the piece of utility you're using. But if you look at Molotovs, you're thinking about using them to set yourself up or to block off, delay, or split up and execute. So when you're thinking of a Molotov, you're thinking of something like Molly and Car on T side of Inferno to allow yourself to gain ground and get positions that you otherwise couldn't without being worried of an aggressive play. The car peak is incredibly common on CT side. However, if you molly it off and then you can get a player close half wall, just the threat of this player being there, the fact that he could be around this corner changes the ways the CTs have to play as opposed to being able to go hyper aggressive and push straight down banana, which you will sometimes see. One of the other more common ways to use a Molotov is to kind of cut and execute in half. So for example, if you're getting executed on the A bomb site here, you can do something like molly off apartments so that you and your teammate potentially, if you have one, can focus on truck side and then fall back and focus on apps after the molly dissipates. So it allows you to break a rush in half or an execute in half focus on one side and then fall back and focus on the other, isolating the angles and making it significantly easier for yourself. The other more obvious way to use Molotovs is to actually just simply push people out of angles and into the open. That's the one that most people intuitively understand. You know, if someone is sitting in cubby here, you know that it's time to throw your molly in and post up and take them down. Don't think that needs much explanation. When it comes to smokes though, this thing gets a little bit more hazy. The ideas behind smokes are fairly similar to the ideas behind Molotovs, except there are a few extra situations and there are more abilities for you to use them in different ways. Obviously you can use your smokes early in rounds to set yourself up. You can imagine something like smoking off B tunnels on dust two or long A on dust two, where it allows you to get to positions that you otherwise would not be able to get to, especially because it's a full vision blocker. Something like smoking off long A doors on dust two, someone could potentially be looking through those doors. And if there's no smoke, they know you're not on the left side with the smoke down. They can't know if you're left or right, even after it dissipates, of course, is well, you can be using the smoke to block off angles and give yourself control, something like smoking off arch side and fo focusing on truck. The only problem is it's slightly less of a wall or slightly less of a full block than a Molotov is. Someone can certainly push through a smoke and try and catch you in the flank. Whereas with a Molotov, unless they smoke it off and extinguish that Molotov, they're not exactly doing much of the same. When it comes to flashes and nades, they are a lot more intuitive. The only concept you need to be understanding is that these are not less important because they are more intuitive. People have a tendency to think nades and flashes are essentially expendable because they are cheaper. They don't seem to get quite as much done and they're not quite as flashy as a smoke or a Molotov. But really what you want to be making sure, especially with flashes, is that you're using it to either gain control of an area, get a kill or save a teammate. That's generally the three ideas you're looking at when you're using a flash. You can use a flash to clear out an area safely. You can use it to specifically pop flash an opponent, or you know you can have a teammate trapped in an angle and you use a flash to get him out safely. These are all things that can be done pretty effectively. But when you're looking at flashes, you can also use flashes 
in very specific solo manners. I'll give you two examples of ways you can be using your flashes that a lot of people at lower levels might not be considering all that much. The first one is the uh, the hang flash, right? When you look at a hang flash, you're looking at a flash that hangs specifically in your opponent's vision for quite a while so that they turn away from it and you can try to get a kill. A decent example would be something like you know, if you know a player is holding an angle here, right up at top middle, you can throw a flash that will land right in front of them and then peek out. And what they're going to see is they're going to see a flash that is going to be sitting here in their vision for quite a while. As soon as they see it, they're going to turn around and you peek out directly in front of it, grabbing yourself an easy kill. Of course, optimally, when you're looking at flashes, you're hoping for pot flashes that you can peek out immediately after. But when you're in solo queue, typically you're not going to be having that every single time. And you need the idea of a hang flash or the idea of just being able to self pot flash by knowing the way flashes bounce, getting some good practice in and testing over and over to be able to flash yourself into angles by doing something like right clicking it in the air, by doing something like popping it off the ground, where otherwise, you know, you're not going to be able to pop flash yourself with a perfect flashbang from distance. But the concept of utility that really needs to be discussed is the concept of using utility for pressure. And a lot of the time that means using your utility to draw out your opponent's utility. But you want to be making sure, and I see this very often, that you are actually varying your utility. I see it so often at lower ranks that people have a tendency to just kind of throw the same utility every single round with no variance. For example, when I was reviewing demos for my four levels video, I saw someone that was throwing a similar apartment smoke just about like that. He threw it about 11 rounds in a row. And although it does give you some pressure, it does put your opponents in a certain spot, you want to be varying it up as much as possible because one thing's... Because one thing that your utility does is it kind of trains your opponents. If you throw the smoke in apartments a few rounds in a row, they might actually start playing slightly differently. They might start trying to adjust by going heavier through the window, by doing something in middle, then heading over to apartments once it's starting to go down. Things like that can be adjustments. And if you throw it every single round, they're going to play around it. However, if you make it so your opponents want to be close up on apartments early, for example, by playing Playing aggressively a couple of times or by using a different play using your utility a couple of times and then you start smoking it then you're really causing problems to your opponents and especially this becomes very obvious when you look at banana if you throw the same exact set of utility on banana every round your opponents are simply going to change their play if you're constantly nading this side they're gonna go towards cubby side if you're constantly nading cubby side they're gonna go towards this side. This is a pretty common concept to understand. The concept to understand though is that this is relevant in all situations, in all positions, that varying up your utility not only by throwing a different aggressive set of utility, but also by being aggressive some rounds and being a bit more passive some rounds. And especially by changing up the aggression that you're looking at, this is how you can very easily draw out utility from your opponents. If you show an aggressive look with something like a smoke down here, a molly down here, and you know, a flash high, and push down banana one round with this set of utility, then next time, you don't even necessarily have to throw the same set of utility. Simply a smoke at bottom banana might allow your opponents to start thinking that you're getting aggressive and use utility as a counter. And really when you draw utility out of your opponents, for no reason if they're throwing it for very little reward by doing so you're making it very easy for you to win your rounds late round because late round utility is where things really become very significant when it gets to late round everybody has quite a bit less utility so every piece of utility that a team has becomes worth its weight in gold and when you look at that type of situation if you have a t side that can go for a full b exec with 30 seconds left more often than not the ct side is going to have maybe a smoke and a couple of flashes or more likely they may have already used both their smokes but they've got a molotov and a couple of flashes the b exec is going to be incredibly strong in that case 
because the T side was able to draw that utility out of the CTs. So when you're looking at utility usage, make sure your utility has reasons behind it. And sometimes that reason can be drawing out utility. But a lot of the time what you're looking at is trying to make sure you have a consistent idea behind a play and you make sure that you're changing up the way you're looking. Aggressive, passive, make yourself variable. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope this helped. If you enjoyed the content, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit up the Patreon, smash that like button, just smash it, just smash it to pieces, absolutely obliterate that like button, and uh, we'll catch you next time.